Hello and welcome to Burning Questions, a special edition of Burning Questions. Tim O'Connor retains his seat. That's my name, Jason Bonington and Nikita Ross, uh, both. Well, they're on holidays and they're uh, one's based in Melbourne. I think you know who that is. He doesn't leave far from home, Jason Bonington. But Nikita Ross is in transit on the way to Queensland, where one of our guests already is. He's been uh, very generous with his time. Really appreciate you jumping in, Greg Sugars. Um, driving winners at Ararat one day. Listening to Bailey McDonough talk rubbish one day, and then you're up in the uh, the Group One company of uh, a big race meeting. Must be great to be up north. And how's the temperature? Uh, temperature's pretty ordinary at the moment, so yeah, it's uh, not a hell of a lot different to what we've uh, copped back at home in recent days. So uh, unfortunately, yeah, I'm probably seeing Queensland at its worst. It's rained pretty much all day. Uh, I've only just arrived uh, about an hour ago. The plane landed here to a very uh, very wet welcome, so um, hopefully that passes today and uh, it all finds up um, by the time we're at the racetrack on Saturday. We are all around the state. We've got Andy Gath. Uh, you did the show last week, Andy, from Long Forest, and the reception held up, but you told me you're that busy, you're going to have to pull over on the side of the road somewhere. Where do we find you today, mate? Yeah, no, I'm at uh, High Point Western Maribyrnong, so um, hopefully uh, safely in the car park and we can get through it without too many issues. That's right. Good stuff. And uh, Nathan Jack is our other special guest. Really appreciate you jumping on. Nathan, where do we find you today? You're at home by the look of it. Yeah, mate, I'm at home. Yeah. It's away and, and ready for a big night of racing. Of course, Kilmore is where the Metropolitan Racing is on Saturday night. Uh, what is it, week four of the Metro Roadshow? We've got uh, we had Cranbourne, Shepherd and Ballarat off to Kilmore on Saturday night. And that's where we might start with our very first question. Of course, the whole show is brought to us by Hip Pocket Workwear and Safety. Jay Bon, as he does, he never sends me any notes. So I haven't got the full read, but uh, they're a bloody good mob there at Hip Pocket Workwear. So get in there and get all your work needs. The first question, we might start with uh, it might start with you, Andy, just to kick this one, one off. Are the Heat winners interest-free and Knights Templar the ones to beat in the Winter Championship final? Or is there a diamond in the rough? Well, no, definitely the most impressive Heat winners, interest-free, you have to sit in the death and do it tough and I'm with a fair bit of authority and you know, nice Templar come from a position where a lot of horses can't come from at Ballarat and sort of put pay to them pretty quick. So, yeah, de- definitely the two to beat. But with any heats and finals, um, the horses that qualify generally in pretty good form. Uh, Blitz is still a nice horse and so is Serge Blanco. So, um, yeah, it's not just a two-horse race, but definitely they're the two to beat. But I wouldn't be surprised if something else sort of got the job done as well if they had a nice soft run. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be one of the features on the Carter Group 3 event, $30,000. Nathan, you've got to drive in the race. Uh, Rodney Lakey trained Pat's Beach Storm. Um, I don't think Rod's been able to give me much of an idea what is exactly wrong with this horse. It's been a funny one since his Group 1 winning days. How do you see the Winner Championship final panning out? Do you think you've got a realistic hope or or is it going to go to one of the horses that won the heats last week? As we let him back in, that might be an issue. <laughs> we, uh, we Lucky I'm pretty good on Premier Pro because I can edit that. But Nathan is okay. back. Ask him an easier question. Yeah, that was a bit curly, Nathan. <laughs> uh, apologies for that. Um, or cut the crap. Can you win on uh, Pat's Beach Storm or not? Or And who do you think will if you don't? Uh, Improve a lot from last week. Um, it's been quite disappointing at the races. His trials were good leading up to it, but he's let us down at the races. Um, I thought interest, interest free will be the hardest to beat. I uh, thought his run was great at Ballarat. Um, sort of Knights Templar's probably going to get a long way back and probably going to be nearly impossible for it. Um, yeah, if I had to pick one, I think I think uh, interest free is the one to beat. Interest free for Nath. What about you, Greg? Obviously not involved in the race, but uh, it's a really good little race and there's plenty of horses there that you know a lot about. Which way are you leaning for the Group Three on Saturday night at Kilmore? Yeah, look, I pretty much could echo um, the thoughts of what Nathan just said. Then I think um, interest free was very impressive. Um, we've seen him. Uh, race very well, sort of sit sprint style in the past and then uh, sit parked in, in a relatively um, even run race and then run home in a good quarter was certainly very impressive um, for my eyes. And, um, yeah, Knights Temple is probably going to have a fair bit of traffic uh, issues. But, um, you know, if the race gets run to suit, it's obviously going to be very dangerous. But I um, I, I thought uh, Nathan's, Nathan's drive, um, Patch Beat Storm, I hit the line really, really well. Um, I reckon his last 100 metres was better than anything in the race. So uh, I can see him getting a really soft trip and uh, Nathan can uh, blow the whistle at the right time and weave his magic late. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see it hitting the line very sharp from uh, from a soft draw tonight. Yeah, interesting. It's good. To, well, it'd be great to see him just run one well because he's been 
He's just been a touch below his best, I reckon, but uh, yeah, it'd be great to see him bounce back. So uh, a couple in the corner there of interest free. Move on to the second question. Might start with you here, Nathan. Honolulu Bay is the topic. Will Honolulu Bay add to his unbeaten run for Emma Stewart? Or is he up against it in the popular arm? Of course, it's a free-for-all feature on Saturday night. What do you reckon? Benny's trial's been good. Um, he's in the right camp. Obviously, he'd be forward enough, uh, even though he's only had the one trial. But we all know that their horses go to the races ready to go. Um, it's going to be a tricky race, just the same, only over the short distance. And if something like Max Delight can find the front without doing too much work, he's going to be hard to beat. But I think Honolulu Bay's definitely got the X factor, that's for sure. Yeah, nice drive for you. Uh, Andy, you've got Tango Tari, your old mate, drawing barrier six, Kate takes the drive. Um, well, I guess firstly, what do you think of Honolulu Bay's chances? And then maybe a quick word on how you're gonna, how you think the race might pan out for Tango Tara. Yeah, I think he's definitely the one to beat Honolulu Bay. Uh, his main danger is Max the Light has drawn out wide, but he, he still might find the top. And Supreme Dominator inside the back row is going to be a little bit tricky for it. Uh, he's a quality horse. He excels over the short course and he has trialled really well leading into this race. So he's the one to beat. Tango, he missed last week he had a bit of a high temperature, so sort of missed that run and sort of wide draw was probably up against him over the short, but he's probably a place chance only, I'd say. Big, uh, as again, you're not, you're not involved. You're up in Queensland driving at Albion Park and, and your horses are up there, but uh, th- th- you'd know plenty about all these, including Bonsal Benjamin also go around. So I thought was quite impressive, uh, a pretty good performance first up from the uh, from the Stephen Duffy trained horse. Honolulu Bay, is he? I mean, he's a four year, reigning four year old entire and gelding of the year. Is he going to be too classy or is there some horses up and going that you reckon can knock him off? Oh, look, there's some handy horses in the race, but I don't think any of these um, are sort of in the same league as Honolulu Bay. Um, and although he is uh, first up, I suppose there's going to be some question mark. But as Nathan said, the camp will have him ready to go. And I think even if he's only 90% right, I think he should still be uh, too classy for this lot. Um, I was chasing home in the uh, in the size um, finals late last year, and I was driving JOK, which um, I think is a very, very talented horse himself. But uh, uh, weren't able to turn the tables on Honolulu Bay on any occasion. So, um, yeah. Rate, rate him extremely highly. I know the camp do as well. So for mine, um, yeah, he's pretty good. Yeah, uh, I was going to ask you about JOK okay, because you gave that also a really good push there. I reckon, was it in the heat or the semi? You um, you know, you thought you might have had a group one win on your hands. Yeah, he was very impressive. Um, I think it was in the heat at, at Ballarat. Um, really smashed the clock from out wide. And um, yeah, is probably as quick over, you know, three or 400 metres as, as any horse I've ever sat behind. But, um, you know, it's had to... Uh, drive him like a stayer in the final and he just wasn't able to uh, get the job done but still went very very well himself so he's a real high class horse and it wouldn't surprise me to see I know I think the camp are planning on bringing him down for, for um, the Inter Dominion um, later on in the year and um, yeah he'll, he'll contest a lot of the main features um, feature races coming up and it wouldn't surprise me to see him bob up and win a good race at some stage he's um, he's a very classy horse himself so um, yeah just another reason why I respect Honolulu Bay um just as much. Yeah, no, I fully agree with you there. Question three, the burning questions, of course, brought to us by Hip Pocket Workwear and Safety. We're going to stick with you here, Nathan. And when I asked you to jump on uh, today, it was a, it was partly on the back of uh, just a comment you made privately, and I'm sure you'll, you'll back it up here publicly, but uh, you were quite looking forward to, to heading to Kilmore on Saturday night to drive Cravash Door. Um, I don't know if you're keen on uh, hanging around till 10 o'clock, but that's the, that's the way the, uh, the cards fall. This horse... It looks like a lot of talent. So my question to you, how good is Anton's youngster? And will, I've said she here, but it's not. Will he make it three on the trot on Saturday night? He's really good. Um, I think he's got the potential to go a long way. Um, sort of every time I've driven him, he's impressed me more and more each time. And his last swim was full of merit. He, he sort of got home in high 27s or low 28s. And the way he done it, he just done it so so easy. So um I can't see any of these ones beating him in this race, that's for sure. Um, and you, you've, have you driven him both starts, Nate, this prep? Yeah. Yeah. And he, yeah. Um, his gait's been a, a touch of a, an issue early days. Are you confident, Touchwood, that, you know, he's trotting pretty well and he'll do it all right? Yeah. I've four times now, a couple of times at the trials and a couple of times at the races, and he hasn't showed, shown any sort of signs of breaking in that. And I, I think that's uh, in the past. Well, I'm hoping it's in the past, but... Uh, yeah, I sort of think this horse is one that will go a fair way and be going around in, in a lot of Group 1 races throughout his career. 
Yeah, yeah, it's a great drive. Uh, Greg, might go to you now. Uh, he gave me the impression, I can't remember where I said it, but Plymouth Chubb was rattling off all these two-year-old wins, but I, I always felt personally that Cravash Dior uh, might have been a better horse going forward long-term. Of course, Plymouth Chubb's out injured, so it's a bit unfair on him, but does he strike you as a horse that can can go on and be pretty handy going forward? Certainly seems to have the, um, the scope to be a very nice horse, and um Interesting, like hearing Nathan obviously uh, talk so bullish about him. Um, he would have a better, obviously, understanding of the horse than what I would. Um, so that's um, you got to take that, you know, a lot of respect in what what Nathan says with his um, his experience behind the horse. But um, yeah, he obviously seems to have uh, a good turn of turn of foot, which he showed um, his most recent win. Um, I don't think any of the horses in this field, uh, why they're quite an even lot probably behind this one. Um, I don't think any of them have sort of got the high speed, what this one has shown um, at its most recent start. And, um, yeah, you'd think, barring barring bad luck or too many traffic problems or anything like that, anything going wrong, that, um, yeah, he's obviously going to be the clear leader one to beat. So um, he showed that last year, as you say, chasing home Plymouth Chubb a few times, that um, his horse was probably a little bit green and wasn't as, uh, as forward as what Plymouth Chubb was at that point in time. But um, certainly did show signs of uh, of good ability, and um, yeah, as he's maturing, he's obviously only going to get better. Yeah, uh, I said, uh, you know, I sent the questions out. I said she, and you were quick to correct me to tell me that you knew it was a boy. And I reckon uh, you probably know the length of this horse's stride. That's how uh, how learned you are on the on the trotter. Um, give us your summation of Cravash Door. No doubt you'd love to have him in your stable. No, definitely, I agree with you know Nathan and Greggy. You know, he's a quality horse. He's a Good horses too. I'll just do a few things wrong, but it looks like he's come back more solid now. And yeah, Yabby Dam got a great batch of three-year-olds this season. You know, of both sexes, and you know, they, you know, when all the Group One races come around, they're going to be sort of well. Um, yeah, going to have a lot of horses in those races. Um, so yeah, he's another horse that they got. So it's very progressive, and you think um, if he does everything right, he'd be too good for this lot. Yeah, I think we're all in the same boat there. Crash the order, wind the card up at Kilmore. Let's go uh, fourth and final question. We'll go to Queensland. Well, obviously, we're going to start with you, Greg, here, and uh, that's why we wanted you on to talk about this um, this big race. The Blacks are fake, three hundred and fifty five thousand dollars. A Group One, uh, a Grand Circuit event. You've got two horses, Triple Eight drawn one, Better Eclipse drawn eight. Uh, a bit of news coming through yesterday that you're going to drive Triple Eight, and the puppet Chris Alford's going to go off the back row and drive Better Eclipse. I guess before I ask the question, could you just sort of uh, I'll give us give us the breaking news about how you think this race is going to pan out and the decision to drive Triple Eight and put Puppet on the other one. Uh, yeah, not an easy decision. Um, I think both horses are really at the top of their game at the moment. Um, obviously, Triple Eight's been you know, racing at this level for a couple of seasons now, uh, or a few seasons really, and um, Better Eclipse is a new kid on the block and sort of on the way up. Um, he's probably, the draw is probably not great for um, for Better Eclipse. Um, I, I think I can see Triple Eight will get crossed at the start and maybe even by two or three horses. So we're going to get shuffled back. So, um, yeah, that's why I've, uh, I've gone for the master, Chris Alford. He's going to have to make the right decision whether he gets off the fence early or, or waits for, for luck late. But, um, yeah, he's probably got more decisions to make on that one than, than what I will with Triple Eight. Um, I think his run last week was very, very good, even though um, it may have uh, sort of gone unnoticed. Um, he ran the fastest last quarter of anything in the race, and the Sunshine Sprint was... Uh, wrestling with another runner to his inside for the majority of that quarter. So he's in very, very good order. And I think he's he's drawn perfectly for him to say um, it's going to get the perfect run for him to say he can win a race like this. He's uh, going to rely on luck, of course. Um, but if he gets it, I think he's going to be very dangerous. Who's your best chance, Greg? You're driving triple eight. Is that, a, is that the push from you that you think he's the best chance? Um, not necessarily. I think both are probably... Um, have got as good as chance as each other, but they're going to rely on luck from, from where they're probably going to settle in the race. But um, just, yeah, extremely happy with how both horses have performed up here so far and they've come through the runs uh, in terrific order and they'll go every bit as good this week as what they have the previous two, maybe even a touch better. They're sort of uh, really in the zone at the moment. But like I say, from, from the draw, we're going to need a bit of good fortune to go our way. But, um, yeah, both horses are, uh, are good winning chances, um, yeah, providing things work out. One more from you, Greg. Uh, if you could pick the barrier draws, what could you give us a rough idea how you prefer them to how you prefer them to be? Not one and eight. Um, well, I probably would have preferred them the other way around, um, to be completely honest. But um, happy with um, happy with triple eight. 
um, drawing one. Um, probably would have preferred to see um, the other fella maybe have drawn maybe two or three on the second row or, or two or three on the front row, really, um, just to give him give himself a few more options as to, to what we could do tactically with him. Yeah, uh, appreciate that. Uh, Nath, might go to you. Uh, well, the, the question I had written down, will the Vic strike in Queensland's big grand circuit race? And if so, who will it be? Of course, like a wildfire is there as well, drawn off the front row in barrier seven. Mark Pitt will take the drive. So we've got three tr- three chances. Do you think we'll take the big feature on Saturday night? Run. I think we will. I just don't know which one. Um, I think tactics are going to be pretty important. If uh, like a wildfire happened to find the front, I don't think they would beat him. Um, but Greg's horses are in great form and they've done a great job with them and they're sort of peaking at the right time and they're, they're both very sharp horses, so they sort of won't want to disregard them at all because they'll be getting home better than anything. Uh, Spirit of St Louis, I'm not too sure where he's at at the minute. I, I didn't think he deserved to be favourite, to be honest with you. Um, just his streak the last couple. I know last week was OK off a soft trip, but um, the week before was pretty ordinary and I, I just don't think he's got his inner dominion or his Melbourne form back yet. And... Um, I'd be game wanting to have me back on a horse that's probably not in great form against one of Tonkins. It's it's in really good form, and Greg's too that are in great form as well. Yeah, really interesting. Yeah, I was I read some comments from uh, J- um, uh, Jack uh, Callahan about uh, him driving the horse like the best horse. So um, you know there might be a fair bit of speed there, Greg. I don't know if you saw those comments, but um, yeah, the horse just seems to be maybe a margin off, as you said, some of his form here in Melbourne and. Uh, of the Inter Dominion. We've lost AP Gath, which is a worry because uh, he's looking to bounce back from his best bets, but we might press on to those. So it is best bets time. Uh, quite staggeringly, I tipped something that ended up running at about 60 to 1 <laughs> on last Saturday night. It ran all right. It ran fifth, probably beaten five or, five or six metres, but certainly didn't expect that. Um, we might go to you, Greg. Uh, feel free to, to have a crack at Kilmore or, or go into state if you like, but what's the best on the card? Anywhere in Australia on Saturday night? Yeah, I had a bit of a look through Kilmore on the on the way up here and um, today, and yeah, just skimming through the fields, which uh, first glance at them, and I was very impressed with all three runs this time in from Andy Gats runner Yam yeah, Bucky, and um, I think even though you know they probably would have preferred a front row draw around Kilmore in this race, I think he's clearly the best runner in the race. So um, yeah, for mine, um, looks a bit of value because he's drawn drawn the back row. And, um, yeah, and he's pretty good at, uh, at at his best bets, as we know. So I'm putting the pressure on him and uh, and putting it in his corner and um, getting Yan Bucky in. Yeah, well, we haven't got him back, but I'll, uh, I'll sort something out with him. I'm with Yan Bucky in as well, Greg. Oh, I thought he's – I mean, yeah, he got beaten. <laughs> he's a massive worry. Um, I'm going down – yeah, well, I almost put the moz on skeet last week. We should mention, too, Nikita Ross – uh, she went eight winners in a row on burning questions until she got beat with nephew Sunoco last week. So fantastic effort. We don't muck around on it. She's gone. Uh, yeah, Bucky and for me, I think this horse is uh, just a really good talent. And even that that defeat there, uh, I think he ran eighth in his second up run. Uh, it was actually a really good run with absolutely no luck. So um, I'll stick with Yam Bucky and as well. Nath, what do you? I get the feeling it might be a crevasse to your job here in the last at Kilmore. I think he might be just a bit short, so probably Majida in the in the crevasse door. I think Majida's better draw this week. If she gets across, she won't get buried. Um, I think she's the best man in the race. So I think yeah, her in the crevasse door, you might get something. Multi, yeah, good stuff. I don't think we've had a multi lob on burning questions, so uh, I don't mind it. You know, just looking after the punters, but because we can't do on the Kita Ross and start tipping dollar twelve shots. But uh, look, boys, I'll I'll chase up Andy Gath. I hope he's still alive. I'll get his best bet. We'll put it up somewhere. But uh, firstly, Greg, really appreciate you jumping on, mate. I, I know you're flat stick, uh, and you're always good with um, the media. So I really appreciate it. And no doubt the the loyal burning questions viewers will take plenty out of your insights. No worries at all, mate. Anytime. Thanks, mate. And to you too, Nate. Really appreciate it. Thanks for jumping on at short notice. Yeah, no worries. Good luck, Greg. Thank you. Thanks, boys. That's Bernie Questions on July 21, Kilmore Saturday night. Hopefully we've found your winner. And good luck to the Victorians, particularly Greg Sugars and Jess Tubbs in the big blacks of fake at Albion Park. That's Bernie Questions. We'll see you next week.